Hello YouTube, Damo underscore 23 here and welcome back to another episode here on the YouTube channel. In today's video, it's episode number two of Damo Does England. I want to say firstly, a big thank you to everyone that supported episode number one on the channel. We had a lot of people give it a like and a lot of people watch and if you are new to the channel and are new to this series, do give it a subscription down below, it's free to do so and of course give the episode a like, it really helps promote out the new content. With that being said, as promised in today's game, we have got Newcastle in a big game in the Premier League. Newcastle on FM never seem to do too well, but always have a very star-studded squad. And hopefully, in this save, when we take control of Newcastle, they're a team we can win the Premier League with fairly quickly. Since we last met, we've played obviously a number of games, and it's not been exactly all she been all she wrote being swimmingly and going well. There has been some interesting results. Obviously, we beat Man City, and you guys saw the 5-2 win against Wolves. We then drew 2-2 to Fulham, and we were lucky to draw. Um, I loaded up FM, and I think football manager thought Fulham were Arsenal. And Arsenal were Fulham. We got absolutely slapped around, and well, we were 2-2 two -two up. Fair play to Fulham. They really should have won the game. Um, from then, we went on and had, obviously, a little bit of a better time against Spurs, and obviously, this is definitely a game I'm going to give you the away fixture here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, being that this is the London derby. Uh, you know, it's the big one for Arsenal and Spurs. We drew 1-1 to Spurs, only having one shot on target. As you can see here, Odegaard getting to the byline and cutting it back to Saka, who finished with his left peg. Vicario flying like no tomorrow, by the way, there. And then when you see this go in... You, you know, you, good play. Like, great play. Well done, Son, Kulazeski. You know, it's a great finish. When you look at the stats and you look at this game, is this a game that we're going to rue not winning? When you had 14 shots and 1.65 XG and Spurs did nothing and found a way to score. It might be. I don't know why it keeps going back to this view. It is very, very, very odd. Um, we beat Chelsea, though, in the other London derby. That will also be another game we'll give you, uh, you know, when we get the home type of this one. As you can see here, we did very well um, and did play pretty good. Struggled for the ball, though. Then we went on a nice little run of Brentford, where we won 2-0. And we had a lot of the ball. It's our first game that we've done on stream tonight, and we are currently live on stream. Links down below. 69% possession, and we looked fantastic. Saka and Odegaard and everyone looked pretty good. We then look to the Champions League. We currently sit... For you know, top on three points with goal difference. One game won, one game lost. We did lose to Sevilla away from home. We sort of rotated. And this is the thing that I want to say is the rotated side does not do well. Sevilla had more shots, better XG, same possession, looked better. As you can see, it was a rotated team out there with party at right back, Saliba, keyboard. David Raya, can I just say, his first game for the club, finally played him. Mistakes galore. Have a look at a couple of these. And one of the highlights you're not going to see because it wasn't a goal. He dropped the corner. And yeah, first one here though. Raya lets one go underneath him. Just easy collapse save. Wasn't well hit. Oh yeah, underneath me. Not great. And then, uh, yeah, he's, he's not very good, Mr. Raya. This one here, you can't do much about being at the near stick. If I can find you the uh, highlight of the, uh, the cross he drops. He drops one and the guy misses an open goal. He was not great at all. And then another one of the games that he played. Good football there from Arsenal we actually did uh, need to come back or, you know, something like that. I think it was against Dynamo. It was another one that he should have done better with. Beat West Ham, though, comfortably. In the Crystal Palace game, David Raya in goal yet again. We conceded two. Raya, yet again, not having the greatest of day. Um, I think it's the Eze goal. Raya, again, could be at fault. And I'm kind of trying to paint the picture that I think Ramsdale and football manager is a much better goalkeeper. And, yeah, it is what it is. As you can see here, that's a good header. I think it's the second one, maybe. Rayo makes a mistake for one of them. I definitely remember Rayo making a mistake. Guys in chat, I am live. Which was it the second goal? He comes for a corner. He gets nowhere near it, I think, by memory. Or oh, I'm talking smoke at my bum. Yeah, he comes for this one. Gets nowhere near it. And then open goal because he's out of position. Just not a good keeper. I highly recommend if you are with Arsenal on FM. Don't use him. Beat Forest 1-0 in a game where we had to go 4-2-4 to win, which wasn't too bad. We did dominate, though. Came back from 1-0 down to beat Dynamo, where yet again, Ray let one in. And against Brighton, we just played a 4. We went away. We had 56% possession, over 2 XG, did not score. Conceded in the 91st minute to a mistake before Gabriel Jesus scored in the 95th minute to rescue a point, which means in the Premier League so far, we have yet to lose a game, which is fantastic. What we'll do after we see this goal is give you the data hub, and then we'll get into this game against Newcastle. And, uh, yeah, see how we go. As you can see, ball in there. Arguably would have been a penalty on Nketiah. 
have been going like 4 2 4 when in games we're struggling. But there we are. That means at the moment in the table, as you can see, five wins, three draws. We are two points behind Manchester City. We're a couple points ahead of Liverpool. We have a game in hand already somehow. And against Spurs, um, we are a few points ahead of them and United as well. Data hub-wise, if you have a look at the team data hub um, and you have a look at this, currently sit second in the table, should be third on points. Conceding the same amount of goals that we should be up uh, in this system, we try to con not concede too many, so hopefully we go on a run. Uh, against, uh, in terms of goals, we're one plus on what we should be doing in a couple points where we are. Hopefully, we continue to progress in that regard. It's not been the worst. And if we look at the league, we look at the stats and team detailed, and you look at average possession, Liverpool are very high on that list, which is odd for Liverpool. They don't generally keep it. It's Ange and Man City and the Pep's fine. And we currently sit fifth on 59. I do expect that to maybe increase by the end of the season as well. In terms of the team, we're at full strength here. Well, we should be at full strength. Um, I was showing the 4 2 3 one. I'm using at Wrexham to the stream, in case they were new. And here we are in the team. We've got Ramsdale, White, Saliba, Gabriel Zinchenko, Ross, Havertz, Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli, and Jesus. If you have a look at the average ratings, Odegaard's been pretty good. He's come back from a strained neck. Looking at Saka's been fantastic. Five goals out wide. Jesus has got five, and Martinelli's been controlling. Ramsdale's averaging a seven. Raya's averaging a 6.63 for me this season. Let's get into this game. See what we can do here. In terms of the group of the Champions League as well, we're not going to give you any of those games unless it gets really tight and tense. Obviously, it's not part of the save to win the Champions League, but I want to win the Champions League, the, commu uh, the Community Shield, the FA Cup, the Europa League, and the Conference League at least once. Um, it's not something I'm going to go out my way to win the Conference League, for instance, but, you know, for the West Ham, maybe target winning it, stuff like that. It's like doing side quests, you know, trying to win it all and say that we completed everything. This Newcastle side, though, sit, currently sitting in 10th. They've got a very good side on Football Manager. Like Some of their players look fantastic. And I would imagine this is going to be a very difficult game here at home. This is how they're lining up, but I'm actually going to do it this way so you guys can see how good they are because we will use this team in Season 1. Nick Pope's a perfectly capable goalkeeper. Kieran Trippier for one season is very, very good. Cher's not bad. Probably worth getting a, a better centre-back. Obviously, seven, seven Botman on FM is pretty good as well. Dan Burns, okay. Probably worth a better left-back. Bruno's world-class, obviously. Tonali's world-class, obviously. Doesn't have a band. Joe Linton looks very, very good. Miguel Amiron. Obviously, on FM, he's got very good pace, good backup. Harvey Barnes, I know in real life they use Gordon because Barnes is injured and Gordon's better. But, you know, Harvey Barnes, not bad. Isaac's pretty good. And then on the bench, you got, like, the Callum Wilsons who score every time. Um, don't see Mr. Gordon, which is odd. You know, they've got a not bad team. Like, Tino Livermento should be playing a lot more football. And probably what I would do if I was in charge of them is I'd go trip your one side, Livermento on the other when I'm in charge in season one, when I'll get to Newcastle. And that's the fun thing about playing all these games on stream is we kind of discuss what I would do if I was in charge so we know what we're going to do when we get there. Away we go here. We're looking for possession, creativity, and to see what we can do. And Odegaard's got a corner early doors and he whipped one in there. Gabriel's the target and he heads just over. We have scored a couple of goals at the near stick this year so far with the height of Saliba and Gabriel. Throw in, looking to go short. Definitely going to be using long throws when I'm with Luton and stuff. There will be some 4 4 twos. Oh, that's a ball and a half. Pope probably should do better. In the end, he looked on side. That's a ball and a half for Martinelli. And Gabriel Jesus, free header. And that is 1 0. Definitely going to look to do long throws with like those sort of teams that aren't possession based. I think this is a system I'm going to use with Manchester City and, of course, uh, you know, with Arsenal here because it's very much how they play in real life. That's a good header. Don't know what Pope's doing. We lead 1-0. And that, that's kind of what I'm going to try and do, is try and create tactics that kind of resemble real life. I think when you've got the Sheffield, the Ludens, the Burnleys, etc., you've got to build a system that's going to keep you up in the Prem and then look to implement a philosophy, etc., or implement a philosophy that will keep you in the Premier League as well. Where, like, with the bigger teams, you should be trying to create a system that kind of like real life. Like Liverpool, I've got a system in mind and stuff like that. Martinelli, good ball. Declan Rice puts it over the bar. Even in the halfback role, he will get forward when the opportunity presents. Really should have scored. Declan Rice in real life probably scores that. 73% possession, 25 minutes in. It's a very good time. Gabriel finds Ben White. Just keeps his shape. We don't expect too much from Ben White. Just, just do what he does. Goes on a run, though, which is not what I want. You're not Trent Alexander-Arnold or Reese James or something like that. Isaac now. Ben White trying to drop back in behind the ball. Can't really get there. And Isaac goes on a run. Harvey Barnes. 
What a ball to Almiron. Was he onside? He is. What a ball. It's 1-1. One, one. Highlights all come from Ben White doing something I haven't seen him do once. You're an you're inside fullback on defend. Or inverted fullback on defend. Not an inverted wing back, inverted fullback. He meant to just get the ball and move it. What a ball. Ramsdale's beat. And we concede. And that's been my issues. We're using the system to not concede. And we're still conceding. So at some point, maybe we go in and go, oh my God, that's our first rank card this season. Well, we are yet to lose a game in the Premier League. We might lose today. You might be crazy and going, Damien, why are you going to this system? Because I know that I can take like, a player off here. I think it's Habits that's going to come off. Odegaard's going to go in as a roaming playmaker. Or, yeah, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe get Declan Rice on the other side. Odegaard in there. Habits going to go in there. Keyword's going to go wing back on support. Something like that. Ben White really can't play this role, though. Don't really have a bombing on right back. Gonna go to that. Main reason I'm going into the 4 2 is because I've dealt with red cards at Wrexham and still won games in this 4 2 3 1. So we're gonna go to that. Saliba. This 4 2 3 is what I'm gonna use at Liverpool for sure, by the way. It's just a very good Gergen pressing Liverpool sort of system. Saka going on a run. Backstick, Martinelli. Heads, Pope claims. Just don't have the height probably to influence the game. Still going to stay in this system though. Still going to try and play football. Still going to try and, you know, get in their face. We're actually going to get up the field. My mantra is, is that if we... Yeah, like this. Get up the field, force a mistake. Martinelli got to score. 10 men Arsenal, let's go. 10 men Arsenal, let's go. 2-1. Great finish from Martinelli. We get up the field. We get on the press. Maybe, 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 as much as we don't want to concede goals, we have to get on the press with Arsenal. But there we go, it's 2-1, bang. Trippier, he's good on the ball. Back stick, Isak, Joe Linton, good from Rams, that would have been offside anyway. Odegaard looks dead, that's fine. we got defensive options on the bench. Half time, 2-1, we lead. We are going to make a defensive change here. Don't know why it keeps going to that as well. I, just, I hate when it does that. Party's going to come in light for light. I think that's fine. Yet again, it does that again. Does anyone know why it keeps going back to that? Just go back to roll. It's not hard. Do I want to bring Ben White off for Tommy Ashley? Uh, ben White can play that role. Okay. Leave it. So far, leading 2-1. Martinelli having a great game. The 10-minute Arsenal doing the job. 4-2-3-1 doing very well. Keeping so much of the ball too with 10 men. And this is the thing. It's just like we need to trust that this system can do a job. Jesus is dead. Saka's dead. Rice is dead. Again, it does this stupid thing. I might even just change it to position now, just so it does that. Nah, I prefer it. Let's just go on position done. I like it on the condition screen because it tells you what's going on, like average rating and stuff, but it needs to stay like that with the players that's picked. Right, Saka, Martinelli, Jesus, all dead. Right, Nketi is coming on. I think Trossard's coming on to create havoc. And then I think you need to make a defensive change here. Declan Rice is dead. I don't really have a defensive midfielder that comes in. Keywall could go into this role and then move Tommy Asso into there. I think you're trying to hold on. You're going to keep Declan Rice on. I think Fabio Vieira is going to come in as a winger on the other side. I think you're going to go like that. Prefer to have the fitness in the press and Declan Rice can sit in. 71 minutes played. We've had to think about this one a lot. That's a ball and a half to Tonali who should have scored. 
Ball and a half to Tonali, who should have scored. Actually, has Tonali got banned like after this? I, I wonder if Tonali's actually getting banned later. I wonder if the real world mode he gets banned, like Foster retired in real world mode and wrecks him like half, you know, after preseason and stuff. Fabio Vieira whips one in there, cleared away. Vieira needs to get on this. 86th minute, a goal right now would kill it. Ben White, Fabio Vieira, he's got numbers still queuing in the box. Gets to the byline. Ben White's got no options. Declan Rice now, party. I don't even mind if this is a shot from one of his boys, just so we don't concede. Saying that, Ben White cuts it. Vieira, White, one of yous. White, deflection. Get it in. Ugh. Oh, could have gone in. Doesn't go in. In the end, the boys have done well. Is that your highlight? Surely it is. Trossard does well. The boys have played very well in this system. Thank you for the follow, Scouting FM. Thank you very much for the follow. And with 10 men, we've scored a goal late. We have won this. We've not scored a goal late. We've scored with 10 men is what I meant to say. We've held on late. We could have scored one more late. We didn't. It's Arsenal 2. It's Newcastle 1. What a performance. Gabriel Jesus and Martinelli. 2.41 XG. Maybe the 4 2 3 one I'm using at Wrexham is just a too good of a system that we have to use at Arsenal. You know, boys play that well with 10 men. Imagine what they could do with 11. I'm still conceding goals in the 4 3 3 that I'm playing. And the whole point of the system is to not concede and have 70% of the ball. Still kept the good amount of the ball. It's hard to stop playing a system where you haven't lost the game in the league, though. Even though we're not playing the perfect amount of football. And not getting the desired amount of, you know, clean sheets and domination. With that being said, though, that's put us two points behind Man City yet again. We are, of course, going to tell you what the next episode is going to be. I think it's going to be none other than Liverpool and Man City, as you can see here. And let's see what we can do for the rest of the season on top of that as well. Give the episode a like. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys with the most important doubleheader, the two teams that we're probably going to be fighting the title for. Can we win it in one season? Will we win it in two? Or is this going to be something where it's going to be heartbreak and it's going to be prolonged? And will we complete the challenge in 40 seasons or not? My early suggestion is no, because Sheffield, Luton, etc. is going to take a bit longer, but we'll see what we can do. See you guys next time. Thank you and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.